Since the den first opened its doors back in 2005, the multi-millionaire dragons have done their best to get to grips with items they're probably not too familiar with these days. Cleaning products, from sprays to tablets. In true Blue Peter style, here's one that we made earlier. And even cleaning contraptions that have had them in hysterics. I'm sorry, but I'm just laughing because it just looks very complicated. <laughs> I assure you it's not. In 2016, Jana Veli's products to keep clothes clean from spillages immediately caught the attention of the Dapper Dragons. As you can see, liquids simply bead up and roll off, even on this suede shoe. Jana was determined that his presentation would make a splash. And to this day, he's still the only entrepreneur to finish his pitch from a paddling pool. Together, we can make Liquid Proof a household name. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> it's the first pitch I've clapped at, anyway. If there's one household item that's notoriously difficult to keep clean, it's the toilet brush. But apparently not so for the version Tom Keane brought to the den in 2019. Flush brush is a detachable toilet cleaner whose head resides inside the toilet, underneath the rim, where water passes over it with each individual flush. Peter Jones found the information coming his way a little hard to digest. You're saying the very reason that you've invented this yeah. was a little element of cleanliness. Mm -hmm. But that's already in the toilet, very close to where you're going to be. Sure. And it's not going to be totally clean, because that's never going to clean the brush. You're going to end up trying to, oh my god, I've got to get some marigolds on and pull it out and clean it. That's the concern that I have, because okay. I've cleaned a few toilets. Sure. <laughs> and you do get a bit of a mess yeah. on the brush. I don't understand how that magically gets rid of all the poo. If you routinely have that problem, I would suggest perhaps replacing the head. I thought you were going to suggest he changed his diet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you could always rely on me to get down to the point, trust me. <laughs> From toilets to teenagers. In 2016, the den's youngest ever entrepreneur, 15-year-old Arminda Dillon, came in with a product he had invented to clean his own muddy football boots, the Boot Buddy. Big brother Gamindo did the demo. You fill up the water, then when you wish to use it, unlock the head and away you go. They say a mother's love knows no bounds, but when it was revealed that mum Rashpal had spent nearly a quarter of a million pounds, <laughs> getting her son's product to market. Hum, hum. Just, oh, oh. Yeah. Nick Jenkins wanted some answers. What did you spend it on? The intellectual property, below 150. I'm oh, sorry, it's did, a sorry, high... sorry. Did, did you say you spent 150,000 pounds on the intellectual property? Below, just uh, below. That's an enormous amount of money to have spent on something quite simple. Enormous. But that was all brushed off when the Dillons scored a hat-trick with a three dragon deal. Oh, great. Oh, OK. <laughs> the man of the hour. <laughs> Fast forward to the present day, and engineer Lewis Clays from Liverpool is hoping his cleaning solution will get the same result. My product, it's cutting edge, it's revolutionary. I'm pretty confident I'll walk away with an investment today. Will his belief in his business be shared by the dragons? Hello Dragons, my name is Lewis Clays and I'm the founder of Opal Eco. I'm here today to ask for £85,000 in return for 20% equity. Opal Eco is a new revolutionary company offering a truly unique, broad spectrum, all-in-one cleaner and disinfectants. Now, understandably, the world's increased consumption of disinfectants is crucial at this moment in time to safeguard us from COVID-19. However, of course, there's an environmentally secondary cost to consider. For years and to this day, we have relied on heavy industrial chemicals to fight off these pathogens. So, using the same organic acids produced in plants, our biologists have combined innovative modern science with millions of years of plant evolution. We are on a mission to completely revolutionise the industry, creating products which are safer and kinder to families and the only planet we have to call home. Thank you. So I'm going to do a short demonstration. What is that you're rubbing off there? A mixture of tomato sauce, brown sauce. Now, once clean, we'd like to reapply the disinfectant so it's got a longer contact time. It can be left to air dry. 
I can smell it from here. It smells nice. Mm. I'd now like to open the floor to any questions. An eco-friendly disinfectant is the offering Liverpudlian Lewis Clays is hoping will mop up an £85,000 investment in return for a 20% equity stake in his business. Good pitch. Peter Jones gives a verbal thumbs up for Lewis's presentation. But is all fingers and thumbs getting the product out of the box? Ah, there's always one, isn't there? Tuka Suleiman is first up to the plate, and he wants to find out more about the man behind the bacteria busting spray. Lewis, Tuka, prior to this, what were you doing? I'm, I'm an engineer by trade, um, working on some big nuclear power stations. Whoa! But uh, I started a side hustle a few years ago, selling products online, um, particularly on, on Amazon. Yep. And then it got to 2019, my wife was about to give birth to my son. And the next big jobs were down south in Hinkley Point or up north in, in Sellafield. And the Amazon thing was doing enough to sustain a living. So I left my job and ultimately I was closer to home then as well. So you're an Amazon expert? Yes. Self-sufficient? We, we, we can do it, yeah. Good. Percent. So I know a little bit about this market, yeah. uh, just because we have a lot of pictures around this space come here in the den. Yeah. In what way are you different to what we might have seen before? OK. Um, the disinfectant, basically. Yeah. There's a lot of eco brands currently now. None of them can offer an antibacterial disinfectant to that level. And the fact that we're dermatologically tested and um, active for 24 hours, so it's the fact that you're cleaning, but leaving the disinfectant on afterwards. So it's, it's continuing to protect that surface yes. for a lot longer. Yes. Right. That makes a lot of sense. That would be a really great opening line. Then, then you'll have me next <laughs> no, time. No, not next time. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Right. So how long has your business been established? So it's been on since December, but the last three months have counted for 80% of our sales. OK, so what have those sales been? Oh, just over 17,500. 17,500 grand. At the moment, you've come in here with 400 or 500,000 pound valuation. 425. Whatever yeah. it is, yeah. on a 17,500 pound turnover. The, the 17,500 is only a three months worth of growth. Ideally, I'd come here with a, a year's worth of data, but with the three months, I thought, I thought that was a good, um, a good valuation. Having only managed modest sales to date, to Kasuliman questions the price tag Lewis has placed on his business. Green Queen Deborah Meaden wants to know who else is in the mix in the sterilising spray sphere. What's your closest competitor in this particular, the disinfectant? In terms of eco um, credentials. Uh, Quick, 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 quick. So do EcoZone do one? Do EcoVa do one? They do antibacterial products, not a, not a level of disinfectant like 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 this. A lot of the eco brands are usually antibacterial. They don't really they don't really claim viruses as well. Right. So if I decide I want to go out and make a product like this, what's to stop me contacting even the same scientists that you've worked with to develop this? Biocidal products and disinfectant products are not like cleaning products. You can't just go out and create your own one in, in a lab. Well, you did. I, did, I didn't. I didn't create this formulation. I, I, I don't own the patent or anything to do with this. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a seller of the formulation. Right. So are you the only seller of this formulation? No, not currently. Um, I, I did have exclusivity until a very few days ago. But due to Brexit, company who owned the formulation had to be UK based and the actual company behind this was a Danish company so they transferred the ownership over to another company in the UK so my relationship with the distributor didn't have the relationship with the new supplier right do, do you get me this only came to light yesterday Lewis that's a nightmare it was an absolute nightmare so we, we, we managed to get the new company on, on zoom we had a discussion for like an hour and a half trying to salvage it but as you can expect, they only met me for an hour and a half. They weren't going to agree to, to that sort of um, exclusivity that we had arranged. How can you turn it around? I need to have more conversations with them. Prove me worth. If I can go back with a, a, a dragon, I've got a, I've got a oh, better peg to stand on. Oh, Lewis, I feel for you. You've just 
you're trying to make a living and you're trying to sell something and you thought, you know what, I'm going to need more capital, I need to go on Dragons. And what's really hit you hard is that you've had a call yesterday to basically take the rug right from under you because you didn't want to cancel coming here and yet with that action yesterday, you potentially haven't got a business. But I really feel for you for yesterday. That's not a good call to have. The revelation that Lewis has just lost the exclusive rights to sell the formulation in the UK puts his pitch on a knife edge. And now Deborah Meaden wants to know how this bombshell affects the business proposition he's put in front of them. What I'd like to understand is what you own. Do you own the brand? I own the brand, yeah, I've got the chain. Right, so I, your I, business, I... as it stands at the moment, is to package up a product that you have hopefully temporarily uh, yeah. lost the exclusive distributorship yeah. for, but you exactly. own a, a Opal oh, Eco. Exactly, yes. All right, so it's not catastrophic, it's, it's a setback, not... but you can carry on your business because you can still buy the product, put it in the bottle and sell it. 100%. Your business model changed yesterday, and yeah. boy, do I feel for you. Yeah. You know, um, but um, I'm sure you know, not having an exclusive deal has severely hit the valuation of your business. Yeah, I, I, I believe this is a very unique element to an eco-friendly company um, and, yeah, and clean yeah, range. Yeah, but that the exclusive part of the deal, which says I've got this amazing product that is really hard to replicate and nobody else can do it because I've got an exclusive arrangement is a very, very different proposition and therefore a very different valuation to a business that comes in here and says, actually, this product is readily available. What I've now got is a business that is branding it in a different way. And the value difference between those two propositions is enormous. Do I think for one second it's investment ready? I don't. I'm really sorry, Lewis. I'm afraid I can't invest, so I'm out. Disaster for the entrepreneur, as his loss of an exclusive contract also leads to the loss of his first dragon. Will Lewis's precarious position also propel Stephen Bartlett to dismiss his disinfectant? Lewis, um... I congratulate you on coming here today, and I think you'll make money from selling this because of you, and because of your skills and your passion, and I can tell you're a hard worker. But I wouldn't encourage you to try and look for an investor, especially when your relationship with the distributor is so up in the air. Yeah. Because, you know, as much as that might give you kudos to secure that deal, it puts us at great risk as an investor if we give you our money and that exclusive arrangement isn't secured. Yes. I think you can sell a lot of these online. I think that's what you should focus on. Sell out, use the profits to buy more stock, keep doing that. But in terms of investment today, I'm gonna to say I'm out. Look, you've got a lot of passion. I can, yeah, I can feel it from over here. Yeah, you know? yes, now it's on here. I think the mistake that you actually made is coming in asking for 85,000. Honestly, if, if you're coming in and said, look, I just need a, a break, I need 25, 30,000 for the stock, I can get it, I can put on Amazon, turn it into cash, that will give me my life support. I get it. Unfortunately, you've come in at a high level, uh, and I'm going to say, for me, it's not investable when I'm out. I'm struggling with it, Lewis. Sorry, I'm sorry. And I'm good, because you seem like a nice bloke. There's a couple of lads that I'm great friends with who've built a £25 million turnover business just doing what you're doing. Selling it online, building the brand, right? That's fantastic. But it's just not something that I am remotely interested in getting involved with. So I'm out. The engineer turned entrepreneur gets personal plaudits, but no partnerships, as three more dragons decline a deal. Lewis's final hopes of securing the cash his business so desperately craves now rests solely with Peter Jones. Do you know what? I'm not struggling with you at all. And I'm not going to give you a hard time because I think you're just unlucky. That happens. Yeah. And that's OK. Thank you for being honest, but you, at the moment, you don't have a business until you go and secure that exclusivity.
start getting traction, prove that you've got a business. So I'm going to say I'm out, but I really feel for you. Hey, good luck, you Lewis. All. Thank all right. you very good much. Luck, Lewis. Really appreciate your time. Well done, Lewis. Peter Jones ends his interest, and Lewis's hopes for investment are over. He leaves the den with nothing. How unlucky is that? 24 oh. hours oh. before yeah. coming into the den, he loses his contract. Bit deflated, but to learning curve, got some great advice there, so um, I'll take that away with me 100%.